So I had another lucid dream last night, and I know these are very good for me because they're fun, but moreover, I wake up with a tremendous amount of energy to deal with whatever, and to sort of take life as it is type of a thing. Which is interesting because you might think, hey, being able to have this fantasy life would separate you. I mean, I mentioned before that I wrote a story about lucid dreaming and a, and a kid that is lucid dreaming, and I don't remember if I mentioned it, but it sort of ends up that he gets divorced from reality, escaping into his dreams. Um, and that doesn't seem to be what my experience is though, these two times that I've had them. So the embarrassing part is, well, is, is that in Mannheim was in this dream, so that's the, the second time I've dreamed of in Mannheim, which is funny, and it's funny to say, and I almost would rather not, and not for embarrassment for me, but when people mention that I've been in a dream of theirs, it's always a funny thing, and you're like, what symbol, what did I, symbol, I, what was that about? <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so the first part of the dream, I was at something, it, it reminded me of the Matterhorn, but it wasn't a roller coaster, there was a trail, and it looked like a natural mountain, but I just knew that it was sort of a man-made, or a ride, or a, you know, sort of a, a park attraction of some sort, and, you know, you climb up the side of the mountain, and you go in, and you walk through, and, you know, it wasn't a haunted house, but kind of that kind of a ride, you just walk around and look at the little things that have been set up on the way, and this was all non-lucid. And then I'm coming down to the mountain. At some point, uh, I, I had a video phone type conversation with my uh, former in-laws, and uh, whom I still am in contact with. I mean, they're my children's grandparents, and um, and and they had just had dinner or something with with in Mendham. So I came down. I'm looking up in Mendham. I find his place. He's staying in like. It reminds me of this great channel, um, uh, Jamie Mansell, that's building the giant robot. And uh, if, if you don't know that, J-M-E Mansell. This guy's awesome. Lives off the grid. Uh, makes these great little robot toys, which he's evidently got a production contract for of some sort now. He's making a giant version of one of them. Uh, just a, a great uh, working class genius kind of person. Off grid style. And uh, so he's kind of, you know, living in a workshop like, like Jamie would have, um, but he's just there for a visit. And I'm like, Gary, how'd you come here? How did I not know? And, and I don't remember our exact conversation, but we had one, but it was just about this. And he's kind of like, I don't know, whatever, you have something to do. He's, and then when he's leaving, he said, I don't know, maybe it's not real. And I'm standing there, I'm going, not real. This is definitely real because it was so vivid. And, and I had a, a six degrees of freedom kind of thing. I could look in any direction and everything was vivid no matter where I looked. And it just, I, I did not believe that it could possibly be a dream. And I'm like, I know I've been in dreams and felt I wasn't in one before, but no, this isn't it. And then we walked off, I stopped there and I go, you know what, there's no way that I wouldn't know how this came about, how he happened to be talking to my former in-laws. And I said, I am in a dream. And I still didn't believe it, but I had deduced it. And immediately, uh, I realized I probably, I did something that, that confirmed for me, wait, I am in a dream. And it was like, yeah. So I went back up the mountain. I started scaling part of the mountain where, you know, there were no handholds. And I was able just to push my fingers in and to rock bust it out. I spent a lot of the night talking sometimes to people, telling me, you know, do you know you're in a lucid dream? Do you know you're in a dream? I remember the first guy I asked that to, he was like, no. And I said, are you just a prop? And he's like, <laughs> and then I talked to somebody else and they were much more engaged about it. I remember at one point I was in some sort of a weird, I'm always in these like weird places built onto the side of a mountain or stuff. I love that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, it's not that mysterious where it comes from. It's the same kind of thing I would invent uh, consciously and write a story about. Uh, but at one point, so we're, we're standing in this really kind of narrow space. A lot of people were all talking and I didn't really know all the people. Again, it's kind of was like, we're all on a pedestrian amusement ride or something. And uh, the wall there was sort of upholstered, like it was the back of the couch, but no seat of the couch. And I remember trying to illustrate to them, and so I just tore up, and everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing? Because it was all it was all aggro, you know? But I mean, I wasn't feeling aggro. I'm just like, I'm destroying no look. And then I'm like, hey, and I go up to it, and I close my eyes, and I'm pushing like this, and I'm, and I'm bringing it all back together. And when I stepped away, it was all reformed, but it wasn't as good as the rest. It sort of was saggy. It looked like a bad upholstery job, but everybody's like, wow, yeah. And I don't remember anybody ever acknowledging that. I, I asked a lot of people. I saw some other relatives and things like this. And, 
and it was it was fun. And I continue to have this idea that it's not like oh, I can do whatever I want to do. It's more like a risk-free environment. I remember at one point thinking I'm going to do this super jump, and I just jumped, and it was a normal-sized jump. And I realized, okay, it's not enough to say the words super jump. I have to visualize the arc, and if I do that. And this is kind of a problem I have with flying in dreams. I've just never felt, I, I don't have a picture of a natural way to fly. You fly standing up, you fly like Superman. None of them, when I imagine it, when I'm awake, seem like, you know, how a human would fly. And so I've had this kind of issue with the super jump. But when I imagine the arc, then I could do the jump. Uh, it was much more clear. It had less moments of... Um, less moments of uh, sort of blackout distraction where uh, I became too, where the, the dream sort of dissipated because my attention was too fractured and I was too excited. The first time I was just so, so excited. Um, I was walking up to groups of people that I was getting various vibes from and I just walked up and I was stronger than the vibe or could interact. Um, this time was much more, um, I don't remember losing track of the dream. Uh, it's it's like a, I, they're easier to remember than a regular. I'm not keeping a dream journal. Um, they're easier to remember, but they still have this dream quality of you know uh, you lose the memory, but they persist more into the day. And I've really tried to memorize or re-experience you know to help my memory of them, and yet I'm still remembering a lot more of them. But I do remember that it was more consistent. I didn't go from one place and then fade into another. I mean, it was like I was walking around and experiencing these things. And the theme, one of the themes was talking to other characters in my mind. That in itself is interesting, to realize I'm in a dream, but to give sort of a, to have a non-solipsistic attitude. That's one of the things I really enjoy, um, because it's different. You can write a story and sort of interact with your characters, ask them questions. But you are that puppet master somehow still. But in the dream, no, they still are having their own take. This guy, I wanted him to talk to me about being in a dream, and he was just uh, not a communicative sort. And and um, but this is the way I am. I mean, I used to play games like when I first pl started playing the original Sim City. Uh, I, I just didn't want to build a big city. It just drove me nuts that I was building a big city that would be a rich city and have these slums. Uh, and I and at the time I was like I want to make a utopia I don't want to have to have police I want to and I found one of the great things about this the original Sim City uh, simulation and to a lesser degree the current one is um, you know that this was possible I once filled an entire map with nothing but um, um, uh, what do they call it uh, high priced or anyway good neighborhoods no police stations and stuff but then again I never got to the the really cool urban tiles, you know, it's kind of boring. At that time, there wasn't a lot of variation. If you had, uh, if you had that, it all looked just the same. But I've always enjoyed um, uh, granting a sort of notion of reality, even to imaginary people that are nothing but their cars are little black dots, you know, because um, I'm into catharsis, but I'm not into pretending to be an evil person. Like I'm looking for a place to outlet my desire to do that. So, uh, you know, subsequent to that, I realized, hey, I could just play this game as a game and as the numbers and see what it's like to build a big urban city. But I'm coming from a point of view where, you know, I don't want to have a dream where I beat up people or, you know what I mean, or, or uh, take advantage like that. And what I'm really enjoying about the lucid dreaming is, first of all, the risk-free attitude. So the things that are sort of angst-driven when they get mixed with my idea of reality and, and sleeping. Um, that's not existent at all. There is no angst. I know I can go up to that monster. I know I can leave the monster. I know, you know, not, not necessarily, literally, I haven't had any monsters, but let's say a monstrous or, or challenging situation. And, um, and I like the, the physical stuff, like being able to climb an unscalable mountain by just being strong enough to push my fingers in. I had to push my fingers in and drag it down so I could get you know, because if you just push your fingers in the rock, you know, it all breaks away and you still don't have a good handhold. So I'd push it in and pull it down and get a handhold to climb. And that was really fun. Um, uh, and then the, talking to the people and, and, and asking them what they know about the, the imaginary nature of the world, which none of them really seemed to know, but some seemed willing to consider. And, um, and then the special effects, just looking at how vividly beautiful the 3D of everything is. Anyway, bye.